Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for our next deck, which is going to be Mardu Humans. So this was a donation deck to try out, and this will be my, my first time trying out some Mardu Humans here. So I'll be pretty interested to see how this goes. As you can tell, we are uh, really built around here of Precinct 1, which is a human and makes more humans. With all of our multicolored spells here, we just have a deck filled with multicolored spells uh, to go along with the Hero Precinct 1. Only Conclave Tribunal and the Hero itself not triggering Hero. So getting Hero Precinct 1 out early and often will be something that we're going to want to be doing here. Um, as far as uh, the rest, we have three. We're, we are a three-color deck, which can make it difficult to cast the spells. But we're going to try this with Unclaimed Territory. So, you know, we get to name human here, and then Unclaimed Territory can help us fix our mana. So if we're trying to play Judith uh, with our with Black or Tajik, Red and White, Swiftblade Vindicator, Boros Challenger, Fireblade Artist, all of these cards are humans as well that we can uh, use the Unclaimed Territory to kind of help cast them. We do have some other spells that aren't um, humans, though. We do have just some Footlight Fiends because we, we need a one-drop. And... Um, honestly, it may be a little easier to have another one drop, but we're just going with the one one drop right now. And Full Life Fiend is something that's easy to cast. The thing with when you're playing three colors, it's kind of hard to cast your one drops. You know, if you want to play like Gutter Bones, it's probably the best one drop in these colors. But you have to have untapped black on turn one to cast it. That's that's pretty difficult to have. We could have something a little weaker, like Hunted Witness or Dauntless Bodyguard or anything like that. But then again, you have to have your untapped white on turn one. It's kind of difficult. Full Light Fiend at least gives you the option of having red or black. So hopefully we can curve out with that a little easier. So let's go ahead and give this a try. We're going to try to curve out, have our nice aggressive start, finish out with heroic reinforcements or Aurelia on the top end to close the game out and be aggressive. So hopefully our games aren't lasting too long here with some Mardu humans. Let's give it a try. Okay, I'm putting up the Grixis land destruction video up on YouTube right now. Typing that stuff out. Can't really go with the one lander. We can go with the two lander though. This one's not bad. Challenger into Tajik. Ooh. Let's keep the hero. It's just increases the upside of our deck by a whole lot. We only really need one more land anyway, and you know, if we if we don't hit our third land with the the card after the hero, we'll still have the Boros Challenger. So it looks like Esper Control. I think we need to we want to do as much damage as we can before a potential Kaya's Wrath. Could have dealt three with the integrity if I would have just cast integrity on, on turn three. To do the to pump, um, and then also make a one one.
So I'll just have these interventions available at deal three. I think it's there we go. Intervention, finishing it out. Very nice. So we should try we should change integrity for make a stand. That's gonna up the curve a whole lot. Integrity is is gonna be really important with Swift Blade Vindicator against decks that are trying to block, which is you know a lot of decks. So against control, we'll put in Frenzy and Freebooter, and I guess we cut Integrity Intervention. There's kind of too many fours. I'm gonna cut Aurelia. With bringing in these extra fours. And. Basically, do I want tri Conclave Tribunals? Probably want Tribunals. Maybe cut a couple of Vindicators. Or Bor Boros Challengers. One of those two. I guess Boros Challengers. Yeah, Vindicator has a lot of potential to do a lot of damage. That's what we want. We want some nice, fast games, just like that. Where our mana is and everything here. We'll draw some spells. So I think my opponent's probably gonna have. Like, I don't think the freebooter is like long for the world, basically. Is what I'm trying to say. And so I actually kind of want to wait on my opponent to cast like a Kaya's Wrath before I free boot. I actually kind of want to wait a little bit before I free boot. Hunt was awesome for them. That's that's an annoying one. That's an awesome one too. Hostage taker. That's annoying. This is hardly my worst defeat. Yeah, Frenzy top deck would be nice. Question earlier was, what do you think about using an Esper Toolbox control deck in a best of three tournament? Uh, I don't know why that would be better than just regular Esper control. I think Esper control, like what we're, what we're playing against, is pretty good. I don't really know what the, the whole toolbox thing, I don't know how that makes your deck better, I guess. Well, I should probably cast this before my opponent freeboots. Problem is, is like the, the other tokens, they get to just block with Hostage Shaker very easily. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just Fireblade Artist. No.
Oh, right, the tokens are three twos. Not two twos. They're three twos. Right. Judith pumps him up. I was thinking how when the, the tokens die, the you don't get Judith's second trigger. Uh, but Judith does pump him up for that. So it's not even casting the freebooter. Okay, there you go. Music's a bit loud now. Was that maybe that last song? Music should be you know, like the same same setting we had yesterday. It's possible that end of the last song got loud. Uh, or is is the music just loud right now with the new song on? What am I doing here? Okay, it sound is good. Okay. I really should have seen that coming. So usually when you have frenzy in your deck, you want to play all your lands you can. But they're also like a, a Thought Erasure deck. Insight. Their hand has been very good. If we win this game, it's a good testament to our deck. Um, playing hero with nothing else to do. I need to make a thumbnail for the Grixis land destruction deck. Joy, did the donation, did the person that donate for this say last bot yesterday? I know I asked and I, I never saw their response, you know, like while streaming and everything. I never, I never saw their response and everything. And so I, I would have, you know, I would have missed it. I was, you know, looking out for it, but I, I just never saw it. So I just, you know, played it the next day, you know, I'm playing it now. Oh, for you, okay. Their deck is very anti aggro here after board. Yeah, I, I don't have any slots taken up right now, so any slot you want, you can have. I don't have any donation decks in the queue at all right now. Oh 
What are you most excited to brew when extended standard comes to arena? Do we... I, I don't... I I have no idea. I haven't thought about that at all. Do we have any... Any notion of... Um, what is... Like, what sets will be available? That resolved. Alright, we got... We'll reveal vital changes Saturday. Alright, so Saturday, last spot for a donation deck. Let me get this down. I am not going to sit this. Hurry! Actually, this, this shit's gone. Alright, so we'll get Gruel Dinos. Gruel Dinos Saturday, last slot. Sounds good. Alright, fourth tribunal. So in your mind, it's whatever sets were available on Arena from the beginning. So that would have been Ka that would be Kaladesh forward. Not too excited about that format specifically because of having felled our Guardian and Sihili Rai in standard, or I guess in in extended. I guess Just, Kaladesh was not a very good set. Like, block, I guess. That's what I mean. Kaladesh was not a very good block. Neither was Amonkhet with Scarab God and Hazoret and stuff like that. Amonkhet wasn't really that good either. trying to kill those aggro decks here like if I just play freebooter we take like one removal spell then they have a different one it's like freebooter doesn't end the game very quickly I guess I'll play it though absorb an insight Next turn, if we draw land, we can play Vindicator plus Judith. Vindicator just hits so hard. Like, I, I regret not having Vindicator out earlier. And, like, having Vindicator be pumped by the reinforcements or the Judith. Kind of wanted just to play the Vindicator this turn. That's a huge problem. And Kite Sail Freebooter sucks. Just need to play Duress. This card's horrible. Because now they just get to freeboot and take my Conclave Tribunal. If I Tribunal their Hostage Taker and then take their Absorb, then I can't beat this this Lyra anymore. Man, I wanted to play Duress in the sideboard, but I was worried about the number of black sources. But I think we should just do it. Freebird is just a horrible card. Never does anything.
So Tribunal's under the Freebooter. I think our, our best chance is now being able to kill the Freebooter somehow. Them drawing that land and being able to have Absorb up also is not particularly beneficial to us. Freebooter is just killing us. To be to be honest, I dislike Kite Sail Freebooter more than uh, more than you know I should, and more than basically anybody. I just don't think that, that card's good in standard at all. I'm, I just don't like it at all. I just it just seems like it you know it can take something, but whatever it takes, no matter what it takes, the one two body is not fast enough to kill any you know to help end the game quickly. Games don't end that fast in standard. And um, it will just die and they get their card back. And the problem is, is like, as you can see, like with our mana base here, worried about actually having black sources. There's only eight actual black sources in the deck. So certainly worried about that. as far as duress goes, because one in duress in our sideboard. The hostage takers my opponent had there were incredibly good games two and three. Hostage taker really wrecked me. more than 60 cards. They're going 86. We got an 86 card special. Uh, thanks, Egg, Egg Yolks. Thanks for resubbing here for the second mo month, saying, thanks for posting your content to YouTube. I fall asleep to the sound of your voice every night. Well, thanks for helping me do that. I really do appreciate that subscription. Gets our sub battle countdown down to 177. I guess any of these cards are getting lightning striked. Might as well just play this Tajik to get lightning striked. Tajik Elise will hit the opponent first. Boros Challenger, we can grow to be a larger creature later. Never mind. Like a Zoe with a Twitch Prime sub as well. Sub number five of the day. Staying on this hype boat. Keeping it going. Thank you so much, Lega Zoe. All right, let's keep this countdown moving down. 176. Whenever we get down to zero, we'll be doing. We'll be taking an entire stream day of just me battling against subscribers. It'll be a real fun day. And 
course, with this being what I do each and every day, full time, the um, I really do appreciate all the people subscribing quite a bit. So thank you very much for that. Don't really love where we're at. We've just kind of ran out of gas here. Yeah, Matthew, I noticed. Yeah, we'll, so we're we'll be doing the twelve-hour stream for that on Monday. So we have a twelve-hour stream tomorrow and Monday. I was hoping they didn't actually find. their drakes with having such a large deck but they did yeah we could have frenzy in the main deck that was something that we were considering uh, especially that's the Aurelia slot I eventually you know went to Aurelia I mean it's just Frenzy's not going to be the best against everybody, but this is a matchup that I'll be bringing Frenzy in. We're getting a little unlucky drawing, you know, eight lands. It's, you know, more than a third of our lands already in our 14 cards. They have 68 cards left. They had 86 to begin with. So Crescent's asked, how much money would it cost to build Soul Time mid midrange? There's not like an, an exact dollar figure, but I, th I think you'd be able to get it with buying the, the $100 gem pack. That's like what, that's like the amount that a lot of people say. those have first strike I want those to trade before we heroic reinforcements you know heroic reinforcements entering into the the first strike creature wouldn't have been so good heroic reinforcements does give our, our next creature haste also so we can just, just kind of wait till next turn we have enough mana to cast anything in our deck plus this reinforcements we just wait and play next turn And of course, scrying one every turn means that they're not going to just draw a bunch of lands like we have. All right, well, it's going. I should probably make this Grixis land destruction thumbnail so I can get that up on YouTube. All right, so we're playing Frenzies, Tribunal, and that's about it. Um, we need to cut three cards. 
I do like integrity quite a bit of like saving our creatures from a burn spell. I think I may just cut the Fireblade Artists. Maybe a Judith? Judith is pretty weak against Shock, but I guess it also pings. At least Challenger stays alive against Shock, where Fireblade Artist doesn't. Let's kind of trim both of those. Footlight Fiend's just not very good. Maybe I'll just get rid of the Footlight Fiends. Yeah, we'll just get rid of Footlight Fiends. Okay, let's save this. Sorry, this does not look good for us. Yeah, the vault the vault does work. Um, you don't don't get just just packs for the vault. There there's some information about the vault in there. I should have some information about the vault in there. T Core, thank you for that support. Welcome to the channel. I really do appreciate you using that sub here that gets that countdown down 175. Let's keep that thing going down there. Thanks, T-Core. I don't know, am I supposed to just trade Tajik for the Electromancer? Maybe. This will at least be a, a more difficult card for our opponent to kill with the burn spell if they're just playing, you know, four shocks, four lightning strikes, and that kind of stuff. But. Can get two for one. Spit flame. All right, reinforcements on the way. <laughs> what? Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature that player controls. So they're spending... I guess it's just one mana. Still, they're using a removal spell on my 1-1. One, one. Alright, let's find some more spells. Let's not flood out, please. Not flat out like last game. All right, coil my one one. Sad thing is, I may not have a better target for that coil ever. No, my opponent's not stream sniping. I 
Right, they kept this this card on top, whatever it was. Whatever it is, they liked it. Okay. I mean, I, I didn't want to use the tribunal on one of these things, but I guess we don't really have a choice. Because we're at eight, we can't just like sit there and take more damage. Yeah, we can't take four damage a turn, I guess is what I'm saying. And I do not want to trade. <laughs> That's what I wanted my Conclave Tribunal for, is Enigma Drake. <sighs> I got a match where whatever could go wrong went wrong over and over and over again. So can we get enough damage to kill our opponent or draw a removal spell here? Doesn't look like we can. See what happens. So of course, I can pump the Bor the Boros Challenger there to do an extra point of damage, but I want to represent as much strength as I can. That I didn't just you know play this or pump the Challenger. Maybe they don't attack. No, they attacked. Ugh. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And our, our deck's not going to do too well against the Drakes. You know, like we have like the usually one and or two removal spells that we could have there for a drake um, and we didn't didn't have that there so we went 2 deck didn't look particularly good in any of those games unfortunately so that's going 2 and only playing like you know, 30 minutes or whatever. That's not very much for a donation deck here. I think either one of yeah. Let's just let's just try it. Let's just try running it back. All right, freebooters are are just horrible. We just can't play freebooter. The card's just that card's just horrible. I guess we're just playing duress with eight black sources. Just honestly just can't play Freebooter. Could go Coil instead of Clarion. Coil's also still good against aggro decks. And also can kill Drakes. We can do that. Um. 
We need Angraths. That's the card we're missing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just the card we're missing. Let's just get Aurelia out of here. Let's just play Angrath. What do I have? Eight black sources? Never mind. Not main. We'll get one frenzy in the main. Yeah, Angra's the, the card we need. Um, which one of you do I want to cut? Coil or Tribunal? I just play two Tribunals. Alright, I'm going to make these couple changes here and try this again. I'm going to edit our, our deckless command. So I want to run this back instead of just playing 102 league that was very quick. For a donation deck. Especially how we just had, a, you know, a couple of those games, um, where we just flooded out and everything like that, and weren't too competitive. All right, updated that. All right, let's run it back. Let's try it again. Starting over, new league. Hey, Trith, good afternoon. <clears throat> and hopefully this helps a little bit. So main deck, the only difference is Took the Aurelia out for an Experimental Frenzy in the main. And now we have a, some Duress instead of Freebooter in the sideboard. And some and Grass to help out our control matchup. Yeah, we're actually like curving out here. does look a lot better than we've had in the previous games. You mentor you, you mentor you. No, I only I only play the donation decks once. Normally, <clears throat> if going through, if we just lose two matches really quickly and didn't get to didn't get to play very much, then at times I'll uh, try it again. This specific donation deck, uh, the person that donated for it said, "Feel free to make any changes you would like." And so that's why we made some changes before, and so that's a good reason why we're making changes between. So 
So the very first game of Last League, we killed our opponent really quickly as well. And so we got game one here, but Last League we didn't win any other games. Which I guess I'd even need to play these Fireblade Artists for lethal. Could put them down to negative one by just pumping the Challenger. So this looks to be Mono Black Control. With those, you know, Treasure Map, Cry of the Carnarium. So Cry of the Carnarium deck, we're going to take out the Footlight Fiends. Bring in Duress, have Angrath, and this Frenzy. I kind of don't hate Integrity pumping up our creature over Cry of the Carnarium. Hey, Dirk. Being on your three-month streak. Thanks for that continued support. Yeah, this is likely a, a Chromatic Lantern deck. Ooh, that sub out countdown got a lot higher suddenly. Let's get this five out of here. 62. Should I just cut these integrities completely? Cut two Vindicators. No, Integrity Intervention is not bad. <laughs> yeah, you have a different tie. I am eventually planning on making those even a little better. Hey, Tristan has a donation deck. That is awesome. So let's see what we got here. That's another good hand. Hey, I got a deck list I've been playing and sent to another streamer. I've edited it since he looked at it. I've done well with it. At locals, just need your help with the final tweaks. All right, sounds good. So yeah, just send me the deck list, and we will play it here. And also let me know what day or time you would like me to play it. Midnight Slayer. So which which day and which time slot? First through fourth. You want me to play it? Thank you so much, Midnight Slayer. So if I play Hero Precinct 1, of course they'll just Midnight, or uh, Moment of Craving, the Hero Precinct 1. Alright, let's keep that sub-battle countdown going down. 173. Okay, cool. We got Esper, Esper Midrange, Esper Hero. Are you playing best of one or best of three? Ah, there's, never mind. I found the sideboard. Figured it out. And what's with our deck and flooding out? Our deck likes doing that. That was unfortunate timing for the Chromatic Lantern. Ritual of Set. It's going to be tough to beat. Contempt's going to be tough to beat. Lich is going to be the toughest to beat. They're at 18. This is going to be... It's not good for us. They, of course, know about the other Judith. So they're likely going to be contempting the hero. I can just play the other Judith and ping them for two and make a token. That doesn't really seem like it's worth it. Is today possible? Oh, wow. They, they took the Judith. That is really good for me. Yeah, I could, I could play you today instead of one of these other two decks, instead of Selesnya Angels or Quasi-Duplus. 
and move those to to tomorrow. Well, certainly good for me that they contempted the Judith, considering we had another one. Just attack in. Since we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go around this lich anyway. Alright, so y'all want me to keep ooze? The party people said keep ooze. Yeah, I'll run through it with a league, correct. All right, well, our deck's finally doing its thing. That's going to be negative a ton. All right, so we have Esper. Midrange. We do that next, and we'll still keep quasi duple ooze where it's at. Hey, what's up, Dutch? We got 40 gems. That'll do. Make, help make up for losing our last one. This is this is uh, getting kind of jumpy. I'm gonna go ahead and, and cancel. Nope. Never mind. Can't cancel. I wanted to reset the. I wanted to reset arena. Yeah, stream's going really good. Definitely having a good time here. I hope you had a good day at work. Hmm. This is a bad start for us. Real bad start for us. I mean, Vindicator and then Judith pumping it up and then Reinforcements pumping it up is awesome. But all I have to do is just play one other creature, activate Priest, make me sack Vindicator. Doesn't really get better though, I guess, with Full Light Fiend killing Vindicator also. It just doesn't doesn't get better. I have a real bad hand against Priest. Okay. Starting to get better. I think we need an island instead of an isolated chapel in the in the mana base. You're oh, you're playing four absorb with sixteen blue sources? Yeah, you need you need more blue if you're playing absorbs. Like that, yeah. I would I would agree with that. as well.
Well, island's more important to be playing than the planes. So I, I played that Vindicator there to get that, uh, to get this Footlight Fiend out of there so they can't just sack the Footlight Fiend and ping the Vindicator here. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is an awesome card when you're on the play like this and, you know, have it on turn two and the other cheap creatures. We're not winning this one, most likely. Got to really steal it with Vindicator, which I suppose is possible. So what's the deal with folks having 150 cards in their deck? They're just uh, newer players that just put together a deck with a ton of cards and everything. You can have as many cards as you want in your deck. There's no no rule. Like the, the rule is you can have at least 60. So you have 60 or more. You have to have at least 60. So nothing wrong with playing that many cards. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get frustrated about it at all. That's nothing to get frustrated about. It's nothing to, to worry about. It's just, it's basically nothing to really pay too much attention to. Olcard with the tier one sub for the seventh month. Thank you so much, Olcard. Let's keep this hype going with our resub here. Oh, I should block there. All right, Vindicator has the double strike. We need to block there. So we want to draw Integrity Intervention. Be a good card to draw. We did not draw Integrity Intervention. One extra point that I didn't need to last last game, or last turn. Just that one extra point was pretty important. So we we're taking lethal there. All right, baffling end in. Honor guard's not really going to be doing anything for us, but we'll get baffling end in tribunal. And we are cutting, uh, I guess, Vindicator? Nah, Vindicator is a strong card. The problem with Vindicator is, of course, it, get, it gets pinged so easily by Judith or Footlight Fiend. Which is the, the problem with it, but... 
if we get to mentor onto it, pump it up with integrity, Judith, heroic reinforcements, it can do a, a ton of damage. I don't think this is really an Angrath match. Angrath's kind of expensive. So maybe I am just getting rid of in integrity. We could just go away from Fireblade Artist and Judith. Fireblade Artist is not very good. And just trim a Judith because like they're you know they're legendary. They don't play a, a ton of removal either. They just happen to have like the priest early. What do I think about Frenzy? Frenzy necessary? Maybe I'll keep the one frenzy. Maybe I should be going to two frenzies. I could see I could certainly see this being a frenzy match. Honestly. That's a tough call. Well, this is a really nice curve here with Hero Tajik Frenzy. That says, whenever I see this deck, it always struggles. It's because three color aggro is just so tough to do. It's so tough to consistently have your different colors and everything. That's why with like my priest deck and I, I really like, you know, black, white or red, black color combinations more than three color. Three color is just, I, I don't think that it's worth to play three colors in these aggro decks, basically. I think that you have enough good cards in, you know, like the two-color combinations. It's really hard to have consistent decks with three-color. And plus, the three-color, you have to play, like, a lot more shock lands, which means you're taking more damage, starting off behind. Well, it's having a good amount of removal. Baffling End doesn't look particularly good. No, I've not been drinking enough water. Stay hydrated, bots. Let me know. I've not had any water since the stream began. Your crew for my freedom? <laughs> A fair price. Well, the opponent's deck looks a lot more impressive than ours does. But being the two colors means they get to play cards like Spawn of Mayhem and Grath and things like this and be able to consistently no fire, cast their spells. No they don't have to play un unclaimed territory and a bunch of crappy cards. Like that. Yeah, the thing about Mardu Angels is your, your curve's a lot higher with Mardu Angels. So it's easier to play a three-color deck with a higher curve. Three-color deck with low curve is just so difficult. 
just it's just not really doesn't really seem like it's worth it. I'd much rather have what our opponent's doing there at the two colors than our three color deck. A similar kind of deck. Alright, but let's see if we can get any more wins. Because even that last game, we saw how good of a curve we had. And got rolled over. Our opponent's hand was just amazing also, though. Their hand was pretty perfect. I know we need to add more lands. All we've had so many games here where we've just had five, six, seven lands. So you can see the, the problem with playing three colors. We have two lands. We can't cast our two mana spell. Just what's the advantage of monocolor decks? Just consistency. You don't take any damage from your mana base for a monocolor de deck. Sorry, you don't take any uh, damage from your mana base. Like how we're having to pay life here. It's like a resource you never have to worry about. You always get to play all your spells whenever you want. Like whenever you have just all basic lands. It is a, a pretty big advantage. Should I play Fire... Maybe I should just play the Fireblade Artist, too. Yeah, I guess I should have first. Yeah, I should've just played this first. That's my bad. I just missed out on three points there. I was thinking of having, like, the double integrity. We didn't need double integrity. So that means I cannot target them. Yeah, good old Sarah Angel coming on in. It's a little easier for me to beat than Lyra would, would be. <laughs> nice, Crazy Pyro. Glad you're liking your quip. Crazy Pyro, did you hear anything from quip? Quip said they sent him that they would send a message to talk to a couple of people that had ordered it from me because not all these notifications are going through and they wanted to see if they could figure out like what the the problem was. And so they're willing to to pay you for just a little bit of your time. So I, I think they might have sent you a message about that. So whenever this attacks you gain two life. Cool, yeah, twist. Yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, it should be a Twitch mes message. Alright, so they... Problem is, that they attack with Herald, they get to go up to five. Ooh, they did not attack with Herald. They should have attacked with Herald. We had lethal here without attacking. They just attack with Herald, they're good. So it looks like we want some tribunals. Do we want frenzy? Integrity was awesome that match. Should maybe just have four integrities. It's a good card. Let's try playing some Angraths. My opinion on theater of horrors in general. Um, I've been disappointed overall of theater of horrors impact in standard. I think with with mortify is such a popular removal spell, it's it's kind of tough to play and. Really, it's just not as good as Experimental Frenzy. Experimental Frenzy is just, you know, such an incredibly strong card. I think that Theater Fours is kind of best for a mid-range control deck that wants to just kind of keep hitting land drops kind of thing and have an alternate win condition, you know, in that way. I don't like it as much in aggro. Uh, correct. Yud is correct with the this song that's playing right now. Well, we can handle some angels. If our opponent wants to play some angels, we got we got them handled. Uh. They, the two cards will rotate at the same time. So, thinking that one's it, saying that Theater of Horrors is a replacement for whenever the other rotates out, they they rotate out at the same time. All right, so I'm not going to play Hero Precinct one because they could have a sweeper. Mono Black Zombies went awesome yesterday. We went 5-0. We crushed it with the deck. It was a lot of fun. It was a it was a really nice league. I recommend checking that one out on YouTube if you haven't seen that that video. The Mono Black Zombies went really well yesterday. For limited, how do you treat land counts in a deck? That uses spells to pull lands out of the deck. If you have expensive cards and open the gates, for example. Um, basically, open the gates can, for the most part, as long as you have like enough colors to be able to cast and everything, basically count as a land. You know, like if you want to have 17 lands in your deck, playing 16 and open the gates is pretty reasonable. It's a little less than a land, though, so uh, because you do remove a land from your deck, but that doesn't need to be counted too much as a land. Like, for example, I don't consider 22 lands and 4 flowers as 26 lands. You know, that's less than 26 lands kind of thing, like when considering a deck. Yes, there are a lot more powerful cards than Light of the Legion that our opponent could have been playing. Yeah, Mortify is definitely a reasonable card in an, in an aggressive shell. Just a, it's a reasonable removal spell. Hmm. 
Hmm. I should have played Blood Crypt here. Yeah, I was just kind of automatically playing the Hero Precinct one, but then seeing that we're playing against Mono Red and that I drew drew Integrity, I should have just played Blood Crypt and passed and got that thing in into play. Is there any reason to not cast Experimental Frenzy? If you if you have you know a lot of other cards in your hand that you want to be casting. Alright, so doing this first, we'll be able to make the one one that gets to the one one get can block banner at Hope our opponent doesn't kill our hero. Nice. And 1-1 one, one blocks Banneret. The 4-4 four, four blocks the 2-3. How do you think a Mono White Midrange deck would do? Could do okay. We I made a Mono White Angels deck not too long ago that did pretty well. And that's basically what you're looking at there. And yeah, and it it did pretty good. All right, waiting on the hero one, hero precinct one certainly uh, worked out. Our opponent did not have any burn spells though. Get these baffling ends in. Hmm. Do I want Tribunals also? Not really. I do kind of want Frenzies in this matchup. Matchup like if they, if we have to like trade our creatures a bunch, trade burn spells for creatures, I think Frenzy is going to be an important card to pull ahead in the late game. And I'm going to cut Vindicator in case my opponent's a Chain Whirler deck. Or it also just, you know, kind of dies to Firebrand, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's probably Honor Guard can do some blocking. And stop a Chain Whirler via Sheena Pyromancer. It's certainly a reasonable card to bring in. Like, is it better than Footlight Fiend? I don't know. Or not Footlight Fiend, but is it better than... Uh, whatever the red-black 2-2 haste thing is, potentially. thing is, I... I don't want to have the deck all. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to make Hero of the Precinct 1 too bad, basically, is what I'm saying. I don't want to take out all my multicolor stuff. I'm really glad we have the Frenzy in hand. So there's there's different different ways to submit a deck. It's for just going with a donation. It's twenty dollars for a donation deck. Wow. I was not an opponent that wanted to play very much. I was not an opponent that put up much of a fight. Basically, just check out the info panels down below, Dad. There's a lot of information. Like go to the donation decks. Also, you can uh, support the stream with any one of the the four sponsors there. And I'm, I'm doing deals to get cheaper donation decks with all of them. Quip, uh, if you make purchase with Quip or Movement, you get a free donation deck. If you get the $3 Harry's Razor uh, starter kit sent to you, you can get half price off and only have a $10 donation deck. So instead of $20, you can get a donation deck for $13 if you do the, the Harry's bundle that's only 3 bucks, And then just another $10 for a donation. And with MeUndies, you can... Uh, get yourself some uh you get a five dollar donation five dollar off a donation deck there and so that can be cheaper as well you can get a pair of underwear for around thirteen dollars and then five dollars for a donation deck so basically check out the info panels 
Don't think they sent to Mexico, though. Harry's does not, I don't think. Harry's is US, Canada, and UK. Um, the other other ones I'm not so sure. I think I think movement and quip do. I believe. And I'm not sure at all about MeUndies. All right, Esper Control. What do I want to do here? Do I want to go Challenger? Yeah, I think I want to go Challenger. Revitalize. Oh, that's just plain rude. Revitalize is rude. Alright, call me crazy. Your turn. There you go. There you go, bud. I think I'm willing to play another Fiend. I don't really want to play the Fireblade Artist. I don't want to just like have everything uh, get swept up by a Sweeper. It's still, of course, a 3 for 1 if our opponent has Kai's Wrath here. not look good for us. <clears throat> Four mana sweepers. Why was that a necessary card to print? And can we stop drawing lands? So intervention can hit them for three down to seven. <laughs> Thanks, Damon. Ha glad you're having a good time. Is pretty positive this game's over. Best card we could be drawing is Frenzy. If I let them hit with the Dawn of Hope, they get to just uh, draw a card. Which isn't spectacular. Yeah, we, we've talked about Theater of Horrors quite a bit already. Sorry, Spiral Mancer. So let's cast an instant during your main phase for that. Alright, I'm glad we got Mortify out of their hands. Need this frenzy.
So the opponent's tire deck is life gain stuff. Enchantments, that's very bad for us. Certainly need our other frenzy, these Angras, all these duresses. Uh, get some tribunals in for their Dawn of Hope. Basically have a whole lot of things to bring in. The Life Fiend can come out as just a card that doesn't do a whole lot. Same with Integrity. So this is down to 62. And I think I'm going to cut two Boros Challengers. Or one Judith, one Challenger. Try to keep the two drop slot filled up. Let's do that. Another horrible hand. I mean, I guess this is what we're going to try. This is a pretty horrible hand. Right, Judith can do a little bit of work. But all of our sideboard cards are kind of the most important cards. We don't have any of those here. You know, Duress, and then Frenzy and Grath. Those are the cards that will help us win. Alright, and Grath's a start. Of course, we need two lands. Our opponent's deck is pretty well beat to be able to defeat our deck. But we can't complain too much being 3-1 now. Alright, they tapped out. We don't have to worry about Absorb. Let's draw a land, please. Come on, draw a land. Get the Sandgrath out there. And hope our opponent doesn't have Contempt. Of course, you know, we saw Contempt last time. Alright, not so much. And attacking them back down to 20. Yeah, opponent does not want to lose the aggro. That's their entire deck is life gain. This Doe Insecurity deck. <laughs> I don't think our, our our opponent's playing Omni Mill. No, our opponent's just playing Dawn of Hope to Fairy, Asper Control. Yeah, it's a good point. I bet this deck is probably pretty good in best of one. Alright, taking the acuity so they don't get to keep on replaying that and, and go infinite with that. Basically. <laughs> uh. Can we just please play this Angra? Thank you. Um. Would I rather attack with Judith or Tajik? I guess Tajik. I guess Tajik does open me up to Mission Briefing plus uh, Moment of Craving. Yes, they had settle. They had the ability to cast Settle the Wreckage.
Got no fire, no steel. I already muted this person. Damn your eyes. Ram a new course free. All right, time to conclave this thing. Maybe I should have done last turn. Them drawing that contempt was really brutal. Was really relying on Angrath to do a lot for me. That's the card I wanted to tribunal. Why does that keep happening with this deck? We finally use our. We have the tribunal for like ever. We finally use it, and then our opponent immediately has the the card that we would have much rather tribunaled. Thanks, wake up. Doman's acuities have been incredibly impressive, both of these games, especially this game. I don't think there gets to be much a much tougher matchup for the deck that we're playing than the one that we're playing against. No, Radiant Destiny would not be very good in our deck. Ugh. We were defeated. Two games that were not very close. Um, so, we, we ran the... At least we ran the back the <laughs> sorry those are a couple of tough games all right so at least we ran the deck back that's how we say words and had a better showing the second time we played against a couple of decks that weren't so good uh, and played against a couple of decks that were really beat to built to beat our deck overall this is not a deck that I think is very good and just not a deck that I would really recommend building too much um, it's just as we talked you know we talked about a lot with this earlier whenever we were struggling with the deck uh, you know just playing a three color aggro deck it's it's pretty tough it's pretty you know like the mana base is, is really rough um, and everything and having like all these early drops like we don't have a very good late game we saw we really struggled against different control decks uh Gla glass of the guild pact and radiant destiny and those kind of cards do not help one bit against these control decks that we're struggling against they're not cards that you need we need we need like actual like better card advantage maybe the answer is just to go like four experimental frenzies like maybe uh, like 
that could certainly be the thing is just like moving away from reinforcements and just towards frenzies and everything like that. All of these two drops though, they're all okay, but none of them are really that good kind of thing. So, I don't know. Basically, our deck's just really underpowered, like, just compared to, like, what other people are doing in Standard. You know, Standard's a pretty powerful format, and these cards are all just, just pretty underpowered, and we don't have a lot of interaction for our opponent, and don't have a whole lot of card advantage. Hero Precinct 1 is okay, but it's just it's just not good enough to, to carry a deck like this, basically. Uh, so... There we go. Yeah, there are just a, a ton of really good sweepers in the format, and sweepers are, you know, like, this deck's just not very good against sweepers and so on, and just a, you know, a pile of two power, one power and two power creatures uh, gets outclassed quite easily in the, uh, in the format. So, there we go. That's Mardu Humans. Uh, so, if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.